everyone, and welcome to Beats Research Radio, a podcast and YouTube channel dedicated to communicating research and science to the community. The transition to fall marks the start of the annual monarch butterfly migration, one of the world's longest insect migrations spanning nearly 5,000 kilometers from Canada to Mexico. On this week's episode of Beats Research Radio, we have Megan Reich, a PhD candidate in biology at the University of Ottawa, studying migratory butterflies and using isotopes to map their migration. Through her research, she explores topics in environmental science and entomology. Thanks for joining us today, Megan. Thank you for having me. We're we're super happy to have you on our channel. So for your newly published paper, Mapping Monarch Migrations Using Strontium Isotopes, you went on a field study that lasted nearly 74 days and traveled 20,000 kilometers to collect milkweed samples, which is definitely not an easy feat. Can you tell us a bit more about the process of this data collection? Yeah, so as you mentioned, I got to start my graduate studies with some extensive fieldwork in the U.S. So I traveled through 22 states collecting milkweed, which is the host plant of the monarch butterfly. And here in Ottawa, milkweed is very easy to find. It grows everywhere. But in many of the places I was trying to sample, it wasn't so easy to find milkweed. And the only way I was able to find milkweed was through the generosity and kindness of people local to the area I was trying to sample. So I contacted teachers and university extension employees, state and federal biologists, city employees, campground owners. I even knocked on the doors of some farmers. And some of these people even collected samples from places I wasn't able to visit and then mailed them to me and others helped me find sites in their local area. And I owe them all a huge debt of gratitude. So now that I had a huge collection of milkweed from different parts of the breeding range of the monarch butterfly, what was I doing with it? So strontium isotope ratios are known to vary across the landscape due to differences in geology. So the strontium isotope ratio of a milkweed found here at the University of Ottawa will be different than the strontium isotope ratio of a milkweed plant found at McGill University. And we know that the strontium isotope ratio of milkweed is transferred directly to a monarch caterpillar when it feeds on the milkweed. And that same strontium isotope ratio is then fixed in the adult butterfly's wing tissues. So I used the milkweed samples from across the US and Canada to make a map of the strontium isotope ratios of plants. And we call this map an isoscape. And then I can analyze the strontium isotope ratio of a migrating monarch butterfly, compare it to my isoscape map, and estimate the butterfly's natal origin or birthplace. Yeah, so definitely it sounds like a very community-based effort when you were collecting the milkweed samples. So you mentioned a major part of your research centers around analyzing these isotope variations to create this isoscape map. So for our listeners who may not be that familiar, can you explain more about isotope science and just how this relates to like butterfly migration? Yeah, so I guess the interesting question here is why are we using isotopes at all? Um, So ideally, we would attach tiny radio transmitters to thousands of monarchs and track their migration over time. And although really impressive advances are being made with radio transmitters, they're still too big and heavy for monarchs and too expensive to deploy on a large scale. Um, So we can't always use them with monarch butterflies. Um, There's also some really great community science programs like Monarch Watch and Journey North and Monarch Watch tags butterflies by gluing a little paper tag on their wings and Journey North uh, records sightings of butterflies during their migration. And these programs have made huge contributions to our understanding of monarch migration patterns, um, but there are still some limitations. For example, we only recover about 1% of the tag butterflies and we can only collect observational data from places where people are both present and interested in collecting monarch data. And so isotopes have become a standard tool in migration ecology, and hydrogen isotopes in particular have been used to estimate the natal origin of monarch butterflies for over 20 years. So isotopes offer the advantage of being able, we can use them on dead archive specimens, so specimens you find in museums. And they also offer the advantage that you only have to catch the individual animal once. So unlike when you tag a butterfly, you'd have to catch it to put on the tag and then catch it later to read the tag. So studies using isotopes have directly contributed to conservation efforts and also listing decisions. So you mentioned how traditionally hydrogen isotopes were used to study monarch migrations, but what was the significance of studying strontium isotopes for your particular study? Yeah, so as I mentioned, hydrogen isotopes and other isotopes like carbon have been used for decades to estimate the natal origin of monarch butterflies. 
Um, however, these traditional isotopes can only estimate the natal origin to a pretty general area, like thousands of kilometers across. And sometimes that general area provides enough detail for the particular study question. But for some questions, we need more precise estimates of where the butterflies are coming from. And that was the motivation for our recent study. We wanted to develop strontium isotopes as a new geolocation tool for monarch butterflies and test if we could estimate the natal origins of monarchs to a smaller area. So we found that by combining in strontium and hydrogen isotopes together into a dual assignment, uh, we could get a more precise estimate of natal origin about four times better um, than hydrogen alone. Well, that precision of strontium isotopes is really cool to hear. And why in particular is mapping monarch migration routes important? Like what is the significance behind an, an isoscape? Yeah, so as I'm sure many people know, the monarch population in North America is under decline and the migratory phenomenon is at risk. So multiple reasons have been implicated in the decline, including a loss of milkweed habitat in the US and Canada, increased parasitism, extreme weather events and logging at the overwintering sites in central Mexico, and of course, climate change. So to know where and during what time of the migration we need to be focusing our conservation efforts to help monarchs the most, we need a better understanding of monarch migratory patterns and connectivity. And we hope that adding strontium isotopes to the toolbox of monarch ecologists will increase our understanding of monarch migration and contribute to their conservation. Mm -hmm, certainly. And for the for people like us, like the general public, what are some of the next steps that we can do to help conserve this monarch population? Yeah, so on a local scale, if you want to help the monarch butterfly, you can start by planting milkweed, the only plant that monarch caterpillars can eat and also planting native flowers in your garden so that the adults have nectar resources and can fuel up before they start their incredible migration. Yeah, certainly. And I definitely really like what you said before. It's very like community and team-based effort. So thank you for joining us today, Megan. Thank you for having me. This was lovely. Mm -hmm, yeah, and thank you all to Beats listeners for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and podcast channels at Beats Research. Beats Research Radio is supported by the University of Ottawa, the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, Beats Research Lab, and the Department of Biochemistry, Microbiology, and Immunology with the Faculty of Medicine. We hope to see you all next week. 